اوكي يا جماعة خلونا ندرس او نراجع لكشر ناين اللي هي about public key cryptography ف public key cryptography هي asymmetric cryptography should I explain in English actually let's explain in English okay so this is the previous lecture it was about the mathematical background we reviewed the number theory and some really hard stuff that we don't need to understand just we need to understand that um, we have the factoring problem which is the basis of RSA and the discrete log problem which is the basis of uh, public key cryptography okay so um, so in this lecture we will have an overview uh, about public key cryptography and it will be uh, into three sections the first section will be about key exchange and uh, mainly the Holland key exchange and the public key encryption and the uh, digital signatures right uh, okay so in this lecture we will learn um, the main applications of public key cryptography and, and why we use public key cryptography and understand how uh, the factoring and the DLP that I talked about earlier are being used to construct the PKC algorithms which is the public key alg cryptography algorithms and we will uh, see just some examples about uh, public key uh, algorithms such as Diffie Hellman and uh, RSA and El Gamal. Okay, so first of all, we said uh, we want to know why we are studying uh, PKC. So, because although uh, symmetric cryptography is good, we need uh, like we need uh, uh, like we c uh, symmetric cryptography can never uh, can never prove authentication to a third party and we'll see why and actually um, and, um, okay and also because uh, key exchange is difficult and this is one of the reasons uh, public key cryptography is um, and this is why public key cryptography is used also and there's a few challenges that arise and make us want public key cryptography is key distribution and key management so key distribution means um, يعني, if I have a key and I want to talk to Bob. If I'm Alice and I want to talk to Bob, how can I give him my key? Yani I want to talk to him and only he must know my key. So I can't go physically because it's not feasible. And I can't tell someone to send it to him because also it's not feasible. Yani I want to talk to many people. And key management is about... Um, so if I'm a company, let's say I'm a company, okay? and Microsoft and I have billions okay not billions maybe millions of users and how can I generate so many keys yani I'm dealing with universities yani how can I manage millions and millions and millions of keys it's not really feasible yani this is why we want to so this is, uh, I don't know, I think this is the inv inventor of public key cryptography uh, through the work of Diffie Hellman. So Diffie Hellman is the person, uh, Diffie Hellman is the person who uh, introduced public key cryptography for key exchange. So the main purpose of the public key cryptography is for key exchange. So, okay, so here, so, okay, so, um, let's see. 
So here we have Alice and here we have Bob. And Eve is looking. يعني Eve قاعدة عم تتنصت على whatever is being sent between Alice and Bob, right? So how can Alice send the key, K, which is this red K, to Bob, but without having to send it? So this is the idea of asymmetric cryptography, is that although they are using the same key, they are not generating the key, in, like the way he got the key is not the same way she got the key. So to explain it in painting, um, we can see that yellow paint with blue paint with green paint will give, okay, sorry. Um, orange paint with blue paint will give us this brown color, right? But also red, red paint with green paint will also give us brown color, okay? So the idea is that although Eve knows that they are sending the green color, and Eve also knows they are sending the orange color. And Eve also knows the public. This P means public, yellow color. But Eve doesn't know the secret red color or the secret blue color. So they are generating the same key, but they are not sending the key. They are just sending some colors. So how did Bob obtain the brown color first? He, okay, so, ah, so he mixed blue and orange, right? So first, first they have a public key. They share a public key, which is yellow. And Alice keeps a secret. She has a red secret. And the public key is, everyone knows the public key. But what she does is she creates a secret color orange which is not secret, but she secretly, in a secret way, using the secret red color, she creates the orange and sends it to Bob. So Eve just knows the yellow and the orange. She doesn't know the, the secret red color. And Bob, he has the public yellow, and he chooses any random secret color, which is blue, and he creates green. So he sends the green and she sends the orange. Then... Alice will say, okay, I will use the green from Bob and make a secret and add the secret uh, color and it will create a brown. And he will take the orange from Alice and add the secret color and take it from brown. So Alice has the blue, it, the blue is inside of the green and like the secret blue color is inside of the green. And uh, Alice's secret red color is inside of the orange. This is how they generate the same key in the end. Okay. So Eve doesn't know the secret red and the secret blue color. So this it's uh, confusing with color, but let's see how we key exchange happens in reality. First, the main problem motivating a PKC is to securely exchange keys, like I explained earlier. So, uh, so uh, this is called key agreement protocols, and the most uh, well known is the Diffie Hellman protocol. All right, so let's see. This is just recalling the mathematics. This in the mathematics we studied, uh, we have a, a G group G. And we, each group has a generator G, G, small g. And this generator of the group J can generate any letter, uh, sorry, any number inside of the group J. Okay, this is not J, this is big G. And Y is, and if Y is an element inside of G, then obviously the generator can generate Y using X. Okay? So the generator means that uh, that that you can you can uh, find an exponent uh, such that this exponent, uh, when raised, 
when g raised to that exponent give us the y okay so it's called the discrete log problem and we'll see okay the the group is the z star uh, sub p and p is a large prime number very large prime number so let's see we know that g is a generator of this group that they agree upon the uh, alice and bob agree upon a public this is like the public yellow color this is a public uh, group z star to the uh, to the sub p and p is uh, P is public, so Eve knows P, the big prime number. But Alice has a secret X, and G, everyone knows G. Okay, it's public. But nobody knows X. So Alice will choose a, a random X. So G to the power X will give her D1, and then she will send D1 to Bob. Bob will do the same. He will find any y number such that g power y mod p will give him d2. So it's just d2, okay? He will send her d2. Then d2 to the power of x is simply g to the power of y, which is d2, g to the power of y, power x, which is g to the power of y, x. And similarly, D, he gets D1. He doesn't know the X. Bob doesn't know the X. He just know the result of G to the power of X. He knows that G to the power of X is D1. He powers it to Y. Then he has G to the power of X to the power of Y. And finally, G to the power of XY is the same as G to the power of YX. So they have the same key without really sending the key. Okay, so it's more clear with numbers actually. So this is just telling you the steps. So x should be some value from 0 to p minus 1, which is from inside of the group. And uh, she calculates it, and then she sends d1. And OK, this is just the steps. I want to go through it again. OK, so this is just a numerical example. Simply, 7 is the g, and 3 is the secret number. So this is an operation, 7 to the power of 3 mod 11. You can just do this using coding or any type of coding, and you will get the answer 2. Then she will send him 2, and he will send her 4, and they will both get the same final number, which is 9. So this is just the same explaining the steps of the example. So, is the Defi Hellman secure? Well, it is secure against the Eve, but it's not secure against the man in the middle attack, which is Mallory, because someone can come in the middle, and I can explain why later. So, this is why. Because, yani. There is no authentication. There, actually, there is no integrity. Yani, this may preserve... Yani, uh, yani, there is no tag that is used to uh, check the integrity. Okay? So there is no authentication, really. Uh, it's true that only Bob can decrypt what is sent to him by his, like only Bob, okay. So let's see, x where g to the power of x mod p equals d1. Then she will send it to Bob, right? But Mallory will come in the middle and he will say, oops, I'm gonna take your d1. I'm gonna generate a d1 prime, similar way, because he knows g, so he can just choose another x. And then he will send Bob D prime. And he thinks this is from Alice, right? Because there's no authentication that says, oh, this is from Alice. So he thinks it's from Alice. Then what he will do is he will do the same as Alice did. He will find a Y, generate uh, G to the power of Y, and send to Mallory. Then Mallory will take it and modify it. He will find Y prime 
and then he will find generate a d2 prime okay then he will send it back to uh, alice and she will say okay thank you for the d2 prime uh, she thinks this d2 prime is from bob okay because yani, this can easily happen because Okay, just take it as it is. Okay, so she will just... Okay, so key two. What will key... Okay, what will this key be? She will take the D2 and power it to her X, secret X. Then she will have a G, Y prime, power of X, right? And he knows Y prime. And he got her D1. So what he does is he takes her D1, power it with Y prime. Then they have the same key which is key one prime and he generates another key the same way with Bob and in this way he will have two keys this is the only difference is that Mallory will have a key for Alice and key for Bob okay so also Diffie-Hellman uh, it's dangerous to choose your own parameters why because you know you can choose a wrong parameter because the security of diffie hellman depends on the security of the parameters that you choose so the group generator and the p which is the large prime number which is the order of the group need to be chosen carefully because g would restrict g to the power of x y to a subset of all possible values of G, okay? And some values of P, which is prime, uh, can result in creating subsets which can make Diffie-Hellman easier to break. So the key der derived is not really random, right? If you think about it, it's, it's a result of an operation, right? So it's not really random. So the shared key, uh, K, uh, should be hashed, uh, used, will derive, used as a key in symmetric cipher AES, which must look random, okay? Yani, they don't take the key as is. First of all, they hash it so that it looks random, okay? So even though K is a random element from G, it's not necessarily a random string. This is what I explained earlier. So key derivation function is used to produce a random key by usually hashing K. Public key encryption. Now we are coming to the public key encryption. So um, the DH Diffie-Hellman uh, solution was for the key exchange, but RSA is introduced for public key encryption. It's for encrypting messages. So you have a message Y, I, I mean a message X, and you want to encrypt it to Y and then send it. Then decrypt Y to get X, but it requires a pri okay so the idea in the public key encryption is that you encrypt with a public key so anyone can encrypt any message and send it to bob مثلا anyone can take his public key and encrypt the message and send it to bob but only bob can decrypt using his private key okay let's see how this happens so first of all we have a key generator which is a PK for public key and SK for secret key. Okay, so we have a message M and it's encrypted using PK, but then only SK can decrypt the message. Okay. So here we have a public key and she sends it to Bob. Then Bob uses this public key to encrypt a message M. Okay, so in this case, Alice is the one who's encrypting. So Alice has a public key and she has a secret key. So they are generated using the same function, but secret key is secret. 
She sends him his, her public key, and public key anyone can access it. Then, then uh, Bob will do the same. He also has a secret key and a public key. He will send her a public key. What she will do, she wants to send to Bob, right? So she will encrypt the message using the public key for Bob. B, public key for Bob. And then the message will be encrypted. She will send it to him and he will decrypt it using his secret key. Okay? So this is the factorization. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the mathematics. It's just too long. It takes a lot of time and if you just understand the the يعني, we're using uh, factoring like factoring is really hard okay you can't factor a really 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 large number and factoring is means to make it into brackets right so if you have a really 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 large n uh, you can't factor it into two brackets like uh, into يعني, Okay, let's see. So this is how you factor. You ha you get two brackets, right? But it's really difficult to do that when you have a really large number, like a really large number. And I'll show you that later, how large the number is. So uh, the idea is that if you find a, a really, really, really large number P and you find a really, 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 really large number Q and uh, these are prime factors, Prime factors means that they're co-prime. I'm not going to explain this also, but uh, when you multiply them together, uh, we, we obtain an n, number n, and this number n is public. And the totient function, uh, Euler, Euler's totient function, is um, this, I think this is the totient function. Uh, it returns the order of a group z star sub n uh, okay which has all the positive integers from n to n minus 1 why because n is prime and uh, that are relatively prime to n so if n is prime and in our case n will be prime so I mean this is just the mathematical background so the totient uh, function will be p minus 1 uh, factor to p minus one and q minus one. Okay, so first of all, uh, we have the key generation. The, the RSA has a key generation function, and this key generation is done as follows. First, you pick any random two large prime numbers, p and q, then you multiply p and q to find n, then you calculate the totient uh, function, uh, which equals to p minus 1 and q minus 1 multiplied by q minus 1. Of course, um, it, they must be uh, prime numbers, and this is because of this, the definition of the totient function. Then we can pick a random prime number e, and it could be 5, and it should be less than the totient uh, function, and uh, the, com uh, the greatest common divisor e of e and the totient function should be 1, means that they should be co-prime. This is the definition of co-prime. And then we calculate D such that D is the inverse of E. Okay? And D is a secret number. It's a secret number. It's a private key. And D... Okay, we'll see why this, this is the case. Then we return the public and private keys. So the public keys are N and E. So anyone can know that this is 5. And anyone can know the n, but the rest is private. So we pick the two large numbers, and in this case, yani this is using the Fermat's little theorem because it's really hard to identify a prime number when it's really, 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 really large. Yani how can you know if an if a really large number is prime or not? And I'm giving you hella the number uh, 6,762. Is this prime or not? Yeah, and it's really difficult to know. So we use this function, which we explained yeah, in the previous lecture. 
and then we calculate the totient rule. Uh, first, we find the n, then we calculate the totient using the Euler's theorem. Um, okay, this is the mathematical background, and then just memorize the steps. Yani the, we again we use the uh, Euclidean algorithm to find the uh, this value and because again we're dealing with really large numbers how can you find the greatest common divisor it's a really difficult problem okay so this is actually what it's based on being difficult is what makes it uh, uh, an encryption algorithm so uh, then uh, we calculate using the extended Euclidean algorithm the inverse of E. So this is the steps, the revision of the steps. And uh, so I will stop here. This is the, the key generation steps. And I will explain later.